With your host, Taino AGL. These people, your host, Taino L, uh, session 27 on the Galactic Talk. Well, you know, for this, actually, it's his second visit. Uh, I'm really honored to have him here. So he goes by Morpheus, Mysticus, Magus, also Dr. Rod Ace, the ancient shaman. So we have from Pontiac, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So brother Rod A is in the building. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Honor to you, bro. You know what I mean? And uh, I, you know, not, yeah, I'm going to say on behalf of the people, but at the same time, too, I, I got to say it on behalf as well, you know, on uh, the different beings, being in the different densities. You know what I'm saying? It's an honor of having you here. You know what I'm saying, bro? Because you're doing uh, precious work, you know what I'm saying, for the people, even though they might not know so welcome bro right right thank you for having me on here this is the second time i'm on here so i mean i must be doing something right <laughs> indeed <laughs> sir indeed so uh for the audience <clears throat> and for the people that is going to watch it so we're going to go for a conversation uh mm -hmm. more for us mysticus for an hour all right so we're going to tackle different topics and then after this we're going to open up a q a for since there's you know, 98 people, uh, Morpheus, if you don't mind, we could go between 45 minutes and, and an hour for Q and a, you know, you lead me, lead me the way if, uh, if it's too much or not enough, you know what I'm saying? And that's how we're going to roll it today. So bro, right away, uh, from the start, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I just want to say that now and to the people as well, um where i'm coming from i'm seeing now you know i'm saying a lot of activities especially you know i'm saying up in the different layers all right uh in the atmosphere so um key message that there's actually cleanups man that's actually you know occurring now you know i'm saying but not only like you know up in the sky but it's really parallelly you know on the underground as well uh rod i remember like probably in 2019 even of course last year you want you were one of the few that were talking about you know the rescuing or the rescue of the uh, the children you know yeah. what I'm saying? on the different levels uh, yes could you would you mind again of bringing that info to the people again so that they're prepared for what's going on and what what's, what's going to happen yeah. yeah so when when i was telling people when the first signs of the pandemic came into effect all governments shut down the reason that was is because it was a global cleanup of a, of a network of pedophile rings and i was remote viewing telling the people what was going on behind the scenes in real time back then. So I was putting up posts that was the receipts showing them what I was talking about, like the 3.5 average earthquake. Like Rashida been catching a lot of the 3.5 earthquakes. And those are a lot of times are, especially when they synchronistic, those are simultaneous explosions in what they call dumbs or deep underground military bases. So they were bringing children out of here in all different parts of the country. And um, they were taking them to a triage center somewhere in Texas outside of a military base, but I'm not exactly sure which one it was because I had no uh, intel to tell me which base because there's several of them in Texas. Indeed. Indeed. You may continue, bro. Yeah. So um, what they were discovering is that these people were at uh, what they call torture centers to harvest adrenochrome, where they have babies as young as a couple of days old to as old as two and three years old hanging upside down like chicken farms, chicken factories. 
and they they uh, shock them with cattle prods. It's electrical voltage that makes the adrenaline until the baby pass out. So now when the baby pass out, the adrenal the adrenaline is at maximum for extraction. And they extract it right from the cerebral spinal fluid with a long needle that they tap the brain. So while they was doing that, you know, the government was cleaning this stuff up, but the surface they was telling us about a virus and a plan that was actually thwarted by uh, the military um, because Bill Gates had made the proposal to the CIA in 2005, right? And that's actually, you can see the actual proposal and the original virus was supposed to infect the pineal gland. And that was supposed to stop what you call the mass ascension of the sentient beings of the planet and keep them perpetual slaves. You'd never be able to break out the trap if you would have been allowed to develop that uh, formula they was working on. The uh, Whistleblower Act allowed them to use the actual doctor, the lady that was involved to one, sabotage the actual virus that would have been known as Corona and to monitor step-by-step step everything going on by video feed and by written record. So they got, every, when, they, when George Bush told them they, had, they know everything, they know everything. They let them proceed as if the plan was undiscovered but they hired key people in key places to thwart the plan. So that doctor became the whistleblower. This is why you have a COVID-19 relief bill almost a year before the first case is ever discovered. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, knew, that let you know they knew it was coming. So they decided to, instead of let them use it to get one over on the people, we we'll use it to clean up their dirt in the underground. So while they got everybody quarantined to their homes and limited movement, you got government activity, military activity going on globally. You know, they blew up, uh, <clears throat> New Zealand had a, a huge base they blew up. Um, they blew up a submarine over in the Pacific Ocean that was actually a whole underwater city that they would use and they would only come up to take children in and go back under. So like they literally lived under the water in the submarine. They blew that motherfucker up and bodies started washing up and they looked like me and you, bro. Mm -hmm. They look just like me and you. So if you don't know what these bodies is washing up, you think that some of us got slaughtered. No, they blew that submarine up with these pedophiles and these uh, the the heads of these organizations mm -hmm. living underwater in submarines. Mm -mm -mm. No doubt, no doubt. And uh, what Rudder Rowdy is stating as well, you know what I'm saying? So I'm up north, you know what I'm saying, on the uh, continent of America, so... Uh, you know, all the major cities, you know, whether it's, you know, Chicago, well, especially, you know, all the major vortexes, you know, Chicago, LA, New York, so name it. Uh, every territory is, you know what I'm saying, as uh, various dumps. Well, y you have, you know, natural ones that were there by the ancient ones, but as well, you know, some of uh, artificial ones, you know what I'm saying? And without being said, bro, um, you know, with the uh, activities that I'm seeing, all right, by those uh, different beings, I can name one of them. So the Syrians, for sure, uh, mm -hmm. what they're doing up in the up in the uh, different layers of the atmosphere or around, uh, they can actually uh, trigger some of the things uh, on the ground. Um, could you could you could you share uh, the level of let's say because uh, now. Uh, it's really a war on the people, you know what I'm saying? Could you share the uh, the uh, hidden strategies, you know what I'm saying, at the surface on the demanded levels, but behind the scene, it's really a war on the people. The, yeah, it was a war on the people. And it's up to the people 
to say enough is enough. It's not up to me as a single individual to say enough is enough. All I can do is sign the alarm from the forest that I sit in to tell y'all what I see. And when I tell you what I see, it should, it should enlighten you mm-hmm. to the point where even if you don't understand it, it's time to get your attention, then maybe you need to do some investigating here. Right? No so um, the people have to take their destiny into their own hands because other people have deceived them using artificial constructs that's overlays in order to give up their right of sovereignty the move on behalf of the people is for one of the people to stand up and say enough is a goddamn enough y'all y'all getting carried away this is not how humans are supposed to live this is not right so when somebody stand up and say it it's one thing but when you can stand up say it and then produce the facts That's tie right. it all together show them how it worked show them who involved where they at why we had to do certain things that we had to do for survival of the fittest. When somebody can get to breaking all that stuff down, now you really have to pay attention because he might not be as crazy as the world might want you to think he is. You know, so you listen to see if it's an insane person, the ramblings make no sense. But it's an informed person, he can tell you that Biden's a puppet. And that I already showed him how he was broadcasting from Castle Rock Studio with photographic evidence, including the artificial Air Force One that he used versus the actual Air Force One that Trump flight flew in on just here two weeks ago in, in D.C. Mm-hmm. The former president doesn't fly Air Force One. The president does. A lot of people don't know that. The former president has no right to fly Air Force One. The president does. But Biden is using the movie uh, studio Air Force One prop plane and Trump is flying on the actual Air Force One. And the only time you see a Biden in what appears to be a real military um, transport is Marine One, which is actually a replica as well because the actual Marine One hasn't moved. Mm -hmm. You see, like the people hasn't got enough, they haven't realized that Ever since the elections, when they discovered the fraud in the elections, D.C.'s been closed. The White House has been fenced in. The state building's been fixed. The Senate building's been fenced in with military guards, National Guard stationed in the building, sleeping on the floor. That shit hasn't stopped since the election. So where is they having these Senate uh, 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 meetings at? Studios. It's all the front. Say that again, bro. It's all the front. Mm-hmm. It's a stage show. For anybody that'll follow the mainstream, they can follow it to their own demise because that's not what's really going on. So I'm telling them what's going on behind the cameras and they looking at what the cameras produce. And that's what makes what I'm telling them different from what other people is telling them because they can actually monitor what I'm saying with the weather events, you know what I'm saying? With real-time stuff that's on the ground. and But people have a tendency to think there's no process and stuff is just instant. Everything requires a process. And this process that we're working on now is steps in play. So they had until September the 11th to answer whether they would produce Larry Hoover. They answered. They agreed. Then they had to agree to produce Tukey, and they agreed. Now, then they had to agree to produce Angel Bay, and they also agreed. So now, the Three Kings, we they, we know that they that Larry and Jeff was in Colorado. They in Chicago now, and they're not in no handcuffs. They having meetings right now, organizing top leadership from the grassroots people. Malachi York ain't in Colorado no more. Mm-hmm. H. Rap Brown not in Colorado no more. You know? And now yeah. they're bringing him in from other places, like Mumia from, um, if, if, he's, if he made it through the cancer, I haven't checked on him lately, but he had cancer last. I know he's real sick, but he was up in New Jersey. 
You know, you got a silent Shakur waiting to fly in from Cuba, but she can't come home until she see three kings walk the lane. You know? Yep. So a lot of people don't think that I know what I'm talking about, about Tukey. So I had the oracles do the read. The oracle did the read, and she said, from this platform today, was going to send the last cycle to, the next, to this Sunday. She said, on the Sunday is the day of the sun where they have to produce the sun, which is the king. And it's three sons, three kings on the belt of Orion. It's the Orion belt. Right? So now we're talking about the great Orianos of mythology is actually a signal for time of the closing of the age. You know? So they call him Osiris, Lord of the Perfect Black. But the perfect is black is the noon because that's the source of all, right? So in order to be the Lord of the Perfect Black or Lord of the Noon, then the Osirian has to be able to manipulate the very fabric of creation itself, you know? But he got to be preceded by three kings. The three kings got to walk the land. And the only one that can tell you who the three kings is, I've already told you. Mm -hmm. What happened to us <clears throat> was a grand deception by the Tudors of Europe. Yeah, we together, me and Ty, we're together. Keep going on, bro. Uh, I, I, I heard somebody cut in. I thought they was coming in with a question. Anyway, no, we're, so we're going to resist for it for, for uh, the next hour. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the invaders that came in, they got kicked out of Europe for the same stuff they're doing over here. Raping babies, harvesting adrenochrome, human trafficking, slavery, binding servitude, crimes against humanity overall. Right. So now we need to get back to where we can raise the children to have the future that's prosperous and bountiful instead of miserable and suffering. That required the assistance of each one teach one, we all might reach some. You know, mm -hmm. so by going back to our history, studying our culture and what our elders say, Dr. Clark said it best. The story in and of itself doesn't have to be true to carry the truth in it. Right? So, yeah, like, Take Nan Calloway. He blew the shit out of it. it. There was no actual Nat Turner. The story is a fiction. But it's a fiction in order to relay a truth. Who? Be, how did they catch Nat Turner? Somebody who looked like him said, he right here. Right? How did they catch Denmark Vase? Somebody looked just like him said, he right over here. Right? How did they catch Gabriel Prosser? Somebody look just like him, say, hey, he right over here, right? That's so right. when you go, even when you go into Haiti, when they started the Haitian Revolution, before they could even fight the French, they had to kill a whole bunch of their own. And we people, don't want to talk about that part, though. Exactly. And that so-called war, that so-called right. war was between, you know, people that looks like you and I, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. On both sides, yeah. So they say, African proverb, it says, before you can fight, you say, when you defeat the enemy within, you no longer have to fear the enemy without. Why is that? Because that which is in you is always greater than that which is outside of you. Right? So when you understand yourself, you know who move on your frequency. So let's go back to the pyramids, man, know thyself. Why? What the books say? Know that the light within thee is greater than anything that shines in the world, right? Mm -hmm. What the song say? This little light of man, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. What little light is that? Where is that? And how you gonna let it shine? Right. So these are clues. Breadcrumbs, Hansel and Gretel. It incorporate every aspect of human life. So it requires you to have to study every aspect of human life in order to find out where the problem and solution. 
but they break it up into sections. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. That was given to me by Neely Fuller in the United Independent Compensatory Code for breaking the chains of white supremacy. Then he told me to look at it. When I called him, he told me, look at it like you're looking at it from the position of the warden of a prison. And then you can see clearly what's going on. That changed everything. Right. But if you ain't never been to prison, you wouldn't know how the inmate look versus how the warden look at it. The inmates can be in that mug raising holy hell, but the warden don't care. You know why? Because he's going to crush him in front of all the rest of them to keep him in line. And he's going to put him in a box of isolation. You don't worry about that nigga no more. He ain't causing no more problems. So if the warden ain't phased by the troublemaker, he got to be worried about the peacekeeper. How do you know? Because every time it's a peacekeeper on the compound, they want to get rid of him. To the point where the prison politics requires the prison staff to put hits on inmates because they starting to get the momentum and the awakening of the people behind them. And then somebody look just like us carry it out every time. You know, but we out here in the streets never notice. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to go into the system in order to find out what's going on in there. Been there, done that. Yeah. So only from the person that's on the outside that's been on the inside can you see both sides. You know, that's called standing on the wall because no longer held by it. But you still got a uh, contact to what's going on in there because you got an emotional connection to the people like you under those conditions. You know, I was leaving. I sat and I was talking to a Atlantic brother and I told him, man, the worst thing about leaving is I feel like I'm leaving all of the real soldiers on the battlefield. He said, man, don't even worry about us. We've been doing this. We're going to be doing it. As long as there's some fight to be had, we got fight in us. You go home and live your life. Word. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I took that piece of advice, but it, it also lit a fire in me because I got to figure out what's going on where the brother I was talking to, we call him Blackie, but is he real dark? But he been in a uh, life bit since he was like 14. He was in his 40s when I was having this conversation with him, and that was 15 years ago. When is enough enough? But they don't want us to say nothing because if we say something, then people become aware. The awareness is what they fear. Right. So when I tell them three kings is finna walk this land, three kings finna walk this land. They don't have any choice because it's the law of nature. It's the law of the universe they have to buy by, which is superior to their contract law that they're trying to enforce. They law of nations. So the United Nations is closed. Buckingham Palace is closed. Mm -hmm. Vatican is closed. D.C. is closed. The CIA is shut down, you know? So when you when you start looking at what the what's going on, you find out that all of the enemy forces have been obliterated on the surface of the earth, but that's because of the spiritual work that was done in the ethers around the surface of the earth first, right? One of us had to find it. One of us, it don't tell you, don't, we don't need all of us, they have to find it. one of us. Just one. And the first one find it, bring the whole house of cards down on the head. And I was sent to go find it by King Hoover. And his specific instructions is, let them other suckers gang bang, you go brain bang. We need your brain, we don't need your muscle. We got enough muscles. We got enough fighters. We got enough shooters and stabbers, thieves and robbers. We need somebody with a brain. So I followed the instructions, hit the books on a level that I don't think nobody else would even be willing to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I put it all together. You know, and it had to take me from literally 
reverse engineering everything according to the records. Yeah. And then I had to learn the psychic ability to tune into the read the Akashic records so I can do the match. And what don't match don't belong. That's a lie. It don't belong there. So now I know how to get rid of the lies. So that removes the deception from the equation. When you can't be deceived, you and they in trouble then because a number one tool of device is deception. It's divide and conquer predicated upon principles of deception. Never let you know who the real enemy is and to keep you fighting the enemy they give you for the rest of your life. This is the formula. Mm -hmm. They call it a Hegelian dialectic. You know, problem, response, solution, three-part program, a two-ball cane, right? They Everywhere they go, they cause mischief and bloodshed, right? But it's always against the people that look like me and you. When the people yeah. that, and then when the people like me and you say, wait a minute, who did that? They point to somebody that don't look like us and say it was them over there, but it was these motherfuckers that looked like us the whole time. They look like us. That's why we could never be, beat them. You'll never beat a motherfucker as long as you think he's your friend. As soon as you realize he's the enemy, he already lost. Now you can activate your power. Well said, man. So then the next thing in line after you discover the who, you got to understand his tools of division. Politics, race, religion, and sex, the main four components of division. They all are opposed to each other. The po politician speaks out against religion and sex. The religious leader speaks out against the politicians and sex. The sex industry speak out against the overrighteous religious motherfuckers and the right ass politicians. You know? Then they break it up into economics. That's so they can give you a layer, make it become atmospheric. Because some people can take more pressure than others so they can stay at the bottom longer. So the ones that stay at the bottom longer is the strongest ones because they can hold the motherfucking pressure the best. So that's why they said that they're going to they gonna rise from the bottom. The last going to be made first and the first mm -hmm. going to be made last. The last ones is the ones at the bottom. I've been trying to solve the problem for them for over 30 years. They kept telling me they, they didn't need my help. Hmm. You know, I wasn't accepting people that look like me. That's because the dirty, no good motherfuckers that look like me was telling them bullshit in their ear. That nigga crazy. Don't listen to him. He don't know what he's talking about. You can't even trust that motherfucker. He been to the penitentiary. That kind of shit. But I'm coming with the facts. You can't dispute these facts. Indeed. So when I told them stuff and show them, now I got two and a half years of receipts they can go look at for verification. Both in video form, written form, and in picture form. If you can read tarot cards, the pictures tell a whole nother story. Because the pictures is just tarot cards to me. You know, because mm -hmm. it even the history books, anything you read in the history books, it's only a tarot card to you. Because that no longer exists, you have to read it as an energy and an expression. And then you lay it over the future and see if it fit or don't fit. That's why they say you got to look to the past in order to see the future. Yeah. Just and don't get stuck there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I remember that you you did actually uh, tell this, you know what I'm saying? Uh, last time uh, we met, actually, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to quote uh, what you said. So to see the uh, distance past, you get to look at the uh, distance future, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. vice versa. No doubt, no doubt. And uh, bro, you mentioned something that last time uh, you did brought it forward again. And you did actually said artificial construct, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. last time you did brought the, uh, as you said it, the galactic chess game, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the illusion on the uh, mirage, uh, little quote. So 
before returning on this earth plane, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me traveling different star systems. Um, my visual appearance is uh, a blue beam, you know what I'm saying? On the higher density. Uh, now, especially what's going on, uh, you mentioned it, the artificial construct is quite important for the people to know it and their birthrights to a degree. And now, you know, it's one of the key thing is to look at the individual's uh, energy mm -hmm. towards their earth chakra, right? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. uh, it's vital in this time. So uh, like you mentioned it, people like you and me actually been constantly stuff or shit, you know, behind the, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. fooling, fooling the individual. So I do want to share this. It's actually one of your picture. You know what I mean? So hold on, bro. All right. And let's talk about the esoteric meaning uh, behind this empress. All right. And yes. what's going on? I got a bowling green sweater in there. And what's going on? Oh. You know what I'm saying? On the, on the different, on, Alex. not only uh, earth, yeah. but you know, on the other, uh, you know, star systems, the uh, matric power. So please go ahead, bro. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the Empress seated, right? And then over here on the left, you see the pyramid with the moon rising over it. If you look in the moon, there's all kind of images in the moon, right? Moon magic is governed by a thought and it's called mind magic or mental magic or dream magic. The empress is the controller or what we call her the dream weaver. Now, if you want to know more about that, you go into the Anastasi um, record where they use the spider and it's the symbol and the web is used to capture the deceivers. So then you go into the Native American lore about the dream catcher and you'll see that the dream catcher is a spider's web with feathers around it in the hole in the middle. And only the pure intent can reach through the hole in the middle and the spider web on the outside is supposed to capture all of the negative energy that comes in the dream. So this is why you give them dream catchers. So it all ties back to the Empress, which is the queen seat, seat number 40 on the Galactic Council of Heaven and Earth. And the queen seat is the, the matriarchal order. Now, whenever the queen is dethroned for whatever reason, then the um, divine masculine seat 50 intervenes to restore the order back by putting the, the um, queen back on her seat, the queen of heaven and earth, or the high empress, as they call her, of the earth realm. And this is where uh, her seat is actually seated, seated as uh, the seat of Peter above the pope in the Vatican. And you'll see he sits beneath it because no man is supposed to sit on there. Any man sit there to immediately in the game. So they suspended it in the air 30 feet so nobody won't sit in it. So um, only, those, only the woman that's worthy to sit in the high seat can sit there and she's only determined her worth and her worthiness by her effect on other women and not men. So the more women she raised, the higher her position comes. So in order to seat the empress or the queen seat, what they call a grand matriarch seat, in order to seat her, we first have to walk three kings up to her door. The three kings then have to go and find what she called her, the, the son or the one who controls galactic seat 50. Because not until she see him face to face when she take the seat or the honors position because she be in, she'll know that the threat is resolved when she see him. So that's why it's an order. And the order is next is the three kings. Then we go see the, the grand matriarch to take her position. And then we put the new world in order. Now, 
I want to go over the artificial construct because it's related. Mm -hmm. The artificial construct is created using word magic and using uh, physics as the law of applied magic. Mm -hmm. And the law is called the observer effect. And it's where you see the wave go becomes the particle or wave based on your perception. It's the same way that the earth is whatever shape the most people believe it is because the creators generate that reality by general consensus. So the number, the only way to work your way out of it is to use the balancing of the scales of mind, which is the laws of nature applied to individual to make it affect the world. And that's what the problem come in is when you talk about American uh, skin based racism, it's an artificial construct. So you never know that they got nothing to do with the skin color. Exactly. As long as you fighting over skin color, you will never know that the white is a chest turn. In law, it means the attacker. Mm -hmm. In black, in law is a chest turn. It means the defender. That's all it is. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing more than that. You, the caste system was used to implement the skin-based race system to keep you from seeing the chess game, the fifth dimensional galactic chess game. Know that the white is a chess turn. In law, it means the attacker. Mm -hmm. In black, in law is a chess term. It means the defender. Black as the meaning of dependency and servitude, while white as that of sovereignty and freedom. But these colors are employed only so long as they really describe the position of a tribe. That's all it is. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing more than that. The caste system was used to implement the skin-based race system to keep you from seeing the chess game, the fifth dimensional galactic chess game. Mm -hmm. Conjure encompasses every aspect of human life on the unified field theory scenario. You know, everything is interconnected. So work it to the singularity is the method to the problem. It forms a cone. And the cone forms a uh, telescope. If you want to see distant past, you got to look at distant future. If you want to see distant future, you got to see distant past. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. It's a loop. Yeah. An infinity loop. But the problem is, is the infinity loop is an accident that was caused on purpose in a collider explosion. To jump out of the infinity loop is to wake up at the exact right time to push the consciousness out of the loop so that we can continue to ascend on an upward and evolving level. We out of the loop now. You know, it just needed the right amount of sisters to be awake at the right amount of time it had the right amount of direction and the right tone. All that shit over with. Right on. All that shit over with. Now it's about we at the part of the game where public is uh, public disclosure of all of the tragic shit that they uncovered comes to the open. The matriarch started to get the call to Chicago to meet with Mother Khadijah because she's the highest matriarch on the land right now. Since and then you show the world how to do the same. So then the artificial construct falls down up on the raising of the grand matriarch back to her original position of uh, power. That's why Nation of Islam say the uh, nation can high, rise no higher than this woman. And this is what they are talking about. Well said, bro. So <laughs> thank you for sharing this. So mm -hmm. we have some few minutes before uh, open up the Q and A. So. One of the things, though, uh, you're doing your work, right? You mentioned last time, you know, the, uh, in seclusion, all right, for specific mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, especially, I'm going to say, yeah, since tw we're going to say more or less 20 years ago, there's been a flux of, you know, uh, higher frequencies, you know what I'm saying, to uh, for the people to work with them, you know what I'm saying, for 
this fight that's been that's actually currently it's happening you know i'm saying on different star systems uh bro would you be able to give your uh counsel or guidance to anyone who's been dealing with you know um uh not extreme but let's say uh, um high level of uh energy or mystical experiences and how really to cope with it for their own you know earth mission well the, the easiest thing to do you got to remember the only thing that's keeping you from tapping your higher abilities is fear the barrier of fear is instilled in you which clogs your heart chakra all right so cleaning the filter system in the body your liver your intestines flushing your kidneys is important because the diet they have us on with all of these um vaccines and medications this stuff is toxic to the body right so you're only supposed to be on medications for a short period of time you're not supposed to be on what you call lifelong medications because then they masking something that's going to take your life take for example high blood pressure most people clean their liver high blood pressure go away because it's portal hypertension meaning that the liver is so congested that at the, at the portal valve of the liver, the blood gets backed up, which causes the pressure to rise. So they give you chemicals to artificially reduce the pressure so it'll stop trying to filter the blood. Instead of cleaning the liver to facilitate optimum flow of blood, which eliminates the high blood pressure. Right? <laughs> Then they give you diuretics to when the fluids start to build up, but they never say where the fluid is coming from. You know, mm -hmm. and the fluid is a side effect. It's a mucus buildup. But it's not just a mucus buildup. It's a sweat from congested organs that's causing it. The perspiration is a mucus type perspiration. So now you got this sludge, all this slime all over your organs on the inside, and then they give you a diuretic to dry it out. Eventually, it's going to become so thick that it's still going to drown your heart out with a congestive heart failure. Where if they clean the filter, the filters will clean that shit up. Mm -hmm. So this is what Satan used to be talking about. The stuff that they're giving you is toxic to the body. This it's really is toxic to the filters and the filters is keeping because the filters are clean the body if given the opportunity. Obesity at all time high because the body has a protection mechanism. When the toxins are too high, they trap them in fat cells so they can release them over time. But nobody is doing the cleaning of the organs and the exercise required to burn it out. So then when you get to a certain level of obesity, it becomes toxic to your existence. Right. You know, so it's cyclic. Everything that they're doing is one thing causes the other thing to fail, which causes another thing to fail. And that's why when you start going to the doctor, you don't never stop. Where in ancient culture, the witch doctors, you didn't go to them when you were sick. You went to them while you was healthy, so they could give you some herbs to keep you healthy. You didn't pay them. You didn't have to pay for the witch doctor when you were sick because he figured it's his fault because he didn't do something right. Right? Mm -hmm. So he come in and he find out if that's the problem, and then he treats you, get you better, get you back on your feet. You know, that's the difference. They get paid for you being healthy. These doctors today get paid because you were sick. So they have a whole bunch of aid and assistance in the pharmaceuticals um, controlling the Food and Drug Administration by economics. The sheer economics of the pharmaceuticals is going to make sure that the FDA rule whatever they say. You can't even pronounce half the stuff in the food. Hmm. But if it was natural, you would know this got beans, this got corn, this got chicken, this got rice. Right? But when they start talking about this guy, Monosodium glutamate. 
and bipartisan phosphate. What is all them crazy words doing in the food? What where they come from? What plant grow that shit? Right? Mm-hmm. So because nobody has time to investigate that because the humdrum of daily life. Well, I use my job as also my university. Every free minute I had at work, I was studying something. Right? Yes. So I didn't just go to work just to go to work. I went to work because I was going to school too. Then I was learning everything that the job tried sodium phosphate, all that stuff. You don't even know, don't they don't grow on no plant. So any of those are preservatives, the additives, sweeteners, colorings, all that is, okay, what do they use a the color? Because they play on the optics. It got to look a certain way for you to accept it. Then they got to put additives in to alter the smell because if it don't smell a certain way, you still won't accept it no matter how it looks. But then when they put them two in, it's going to alter the taste. So now they got to add an additive to alter the taste in order that it be palatable or else you still wouldn't, you would taste it one time, you seen it, you like the way it looked, like the way it smelled, but you don't like the way it tastes, you're not buying it no more. So now they got to find another additive to make it taste better. When I mean, you get done putting all these additives in there and then you got a whole paragraph of ingredients and some that should have only took a couple of ingredients. Yeah, like he said, natural flavors are sometimes beaver anus, which is actually true. It's not actually the anus. It's actually an anal gland right next to the anus. They just cut the whole anus out when they go get the gland. The gland, is just, it has the extract that they make for natural flavoring. You know, so all of these things come in to um, make your body break down, Right. When the body break down, then the person is more, you can make a sick person do way more than you can a well person, right? If somebody is in a physical optimum condition, you're not finna make them just do something because you said do it. Yeah. You know? So now what do we do next? Clean the filters, prepare for ascension because this is at hand. The shock and awe is going to be the amazement of the people when they see the three kings and exactly who they is, right? The kings are not picked by political hierarchy in political circles because politics is a puppet show, right? The real leaders is the leaders that the people in the communities elect as they leader by assuming that tribe. And the biggest three tribes on the land are the people that the people selected is the three kings that we mentioned, Larry Hoover, Jeff Fort, and Big Tuki. And so now if we ever want to figure out a way out, all we got to do is get the tribes and people to say produce the king and the rules of the universe say when the tribe call for their king, he has to be produced. So this is why Larry Hoover, because they asked the Elders asked me who my leader was since I figured the puzzle out. My leader, Larry Who, he the king of my clan. I'm gangster disciple. But gangster disciple is not what they told you in your mainstream news. It's an actual tribe of the land. Right? It's right. the same with the Crips, it's a tribe of the land. They was organizing their tribes. That's right, warrior tribes. Because that we was faced with a threat that you need warriors. So the system, what do they do? They strike the shepherd and the sheep are scattered. They went in and they took our leaders and they villainized them. Well, everything they said Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover did, Oliver North, George Bush, and Ronald Reagan was caught red-handed in the Iran-Contra scandal. Right? And everything that they, everybody that's leaders in our community done, they leadership like, for instance, um, they falsely accuse our leaders and our people fall for it without never knowing how to read the paperwork. Dr. Malachi York is a perfect example. 
they tied him to a string of victims predicated upon the genetically traceable strain of herpes. But he didn't have the herpes before, during, or after the crime, but only during the time of the crime, they saying he had it. Mm-hmm. That don't even make sense. They say herpes not curable. If he ever had it, he'd test positive for it. Well, they tested him since he's been in prison. He, he still don't got it. So whoever gave him this genetically traceable strain of herpes, it wasn't him. That's right. You know, so it's either the government gave it to him or the guy that accused him get was the one doing the dirt and uses York to get it off his case. But it's not possible for you to only have this during the time of the crime. You don't got it before the crime and you get tested every year. You don't got it after the crime and you still getting tested every year. But during the two, three, four year stretch, you all of a sudden got this strain of herpes. It don't even match. But our people were so naive. They said, well, he pleaded guilty. No, he didn't plead guilty. He tried to resolve the case, but the judge couldn't take the guilty plea because in order to plead guilty, whatever you allocute or say on the record has to be the same as a jury finding a reasonable doubt, finding you guilty beyond reasonable doubt. If he can't give details to tie him to the case beyond a reasonable doubt, the judge can't accept the guilty plea. It's against the rules. So when the judge, don't, what did they? What did he say he did? He didn't say he did nothing. He said he was taking the plea because they was torturing his wife and, his, and the other women that was arrested with him. And he wanted them to get out is what he said on the record. So that's also called a coercive plea. They can't accept it anyway. Mm -hmm. But our people want to think the worst of our leadership. But the leadership that's in charge is doing worse than you could possibly accuse Bill Cosby of. No doubt. You know? George Herbert Walker Bush, the old man, had a whole ring of boys he had sex with under the age of 10. But his people not going to tell you that. He was the one who founded the whole pizza gate. Him and his pedophile crew. You know? Real talk, yeah. The guy that shot Ronald Reagan, they was trying to put Bush in office. Reagan was really anti-Bush, but he didn't have no choice because they was going to kill him. They still tried to kill him. That was John Hinckley is George Herbert Walker Bush's son, just like Jeb. Put a picture of him side by side. But he mm-hmm. was through an extramarital affair. That's why he used him, because he knew that he wasn't going to never tell on his daddy. Nico take his time in the nut house and come home like he did. Trying to kill the president and they let him come home. He they got a whole fabricated case of an Atlanta child killer. This man was sitting in prison and our people believe he actually killed some kids. But guess what? He was locked up going to trial and they were still finding bodies washing up on rivers in, in Georgia. In the same areas. But they didn't report it because he was going to trial. They gonna get this Negro one way or another, talking this liberation freedom shit. See, we don't want to admit, we don't want to go back to before they accused him of what he was doing. They tried to shut him. They said he was a pirate radio disc jockey who was spreading conscious information through the community. All of a sudden, he turned to the Atlanta child killer. But the killings didn't stop. They were still going on in the 90s. He been locked up since the 80s. 15 years later, the shit was still going on. Hmm. It's just like they got what they call uh, Serial Killer Alley in Florida. People in Florida know what I'm talking about, but people outside of Florida have no clue. When they be finding all these bodies on the side of the road going down in Florida, it's a stretch of highway. They call it the Serial Killer Alley. Serial killers dump their bodies there. But the rest of the country have no clue and it don't be on the news. But the people that's from the area know they always find their bodies over there. Hmm. 
you know? So yeah. these are things that we got to get our people to see for what they is versus what the media told us. That's the only way they're going to understand the truth versus the lie. Everything they told us in mainstream media was to push an agenda and to write a narrative. Right. They don't never want you to know the truth. They want you to know the convenient lie that allows them to push their agenda. It's propaganda. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. So now when um, you listen to what Jeff Ford was saying in the 70s, what uh, Larry Hoover been saying, what Tukey was saying, Black Rays, Blue Redemption. When you start looking at it now, it it, it take on a whole different meaning because they've been telling you who the enemy was the entire time and we've been fighting them with the enemy like some damn fools. You know, so now you're starting to see these celebrities doing the Crip Walk Challenge. Mm -hmm. They called him for the Chiefs. Uh, Right before I got on, somebody sent me, just sent me a LeBron James Crip Walk Challenge. A couple of days ago, it was Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube. They doing this, this the, the Crip Walk Challenge because they got the that message. They know what it means. LeBron James was moved to LA against his will. He didn't want to go to LA. But the same motherfuckers threatened him. They wanted him in LA so he can be close to where they was at in Disney World. Well, we had to figure out a way to get LeBron out. So now he crip walking. You figure it out from there. They thought they had they thought they we was gonna let him take another icon down. It's not so much that that we value the celebrities, it's that they become a focal point of the dirt that's going on behind the scenes. That's right. They become the exaggeration of us. Yep. So when you look at what they did to Michael Jackson, but no, most people don't know that Michael Jackson told you what they was finna do. But they don't. But we don't know how to read signs like we used to because it used to be part of how we was raised. Now it's not That's part right. of how we raised. We taught to read in a, uh, what teacher tell us to read. Read this paragraph right. Not that paragraph. This. One. What you all over there for? That don't got nothing to do with this. Right. Trying to control the man and make the man go where the man, where they want the man to flow in order to give the attention to where they needed in order to give them the artificial power to run their system. You have to agree, but you don't have to be aware you agree. In law, it's called a tacit consent, which is another way of saying a silent agreement. By you not saying you disagree, that means you automatically agree. That's what they've been working on that premise. By us saying uh, free Larry Hoover is the battle cry, the more of us say it, right? So now we had critical mass. Mm -hmm. And now the oracles and spoke and gave a date, right? So from this day is three days to Sunday on the turnaround. And she said from this day, would be the notification and this is the notification this is the sign larry waiting on to know when to step out the oracle gave the day to be sunday as the deadline it could be any time between now and sunday but sunday the deadline from there we gonna see three kings walking the land right so they had to get tukey healthy first and um, Angel Bay wouldn't leave his side because he didn't trust none of the motherfuckers in the medical. So he sat in the chair next to his bed and what, all while he was going through his healing chamber, he stayed with him every step of the way. He wasn't leaving him. He didn't trust none of them. And while he was doing that, Larry was talking to the other leadership on the organization on how to set this, how to set our children back up for a promising future. They got, they got all of the answers. They got all the answers to all of the problems. But first, we got to get rid of the imposters. And so that's why they gave me the message Sunday, far back, and Sister Isis confirmed it, and I fell back, and then I seen what they was doing. 
They was making mm-hmm. them expose themselves. Right on. Yeah, so the sister asked about uh about them saying um the sister that was doing the spread was saying that um Jeff felt kind of like this was a, a tax and ordeal. Then you think about it, this man had been in the isolation for over for over 30 years. He'd been in isolation over 30 years in one man's cell. That's stress enough. Now he got to stand here because he don't want nobody over his brother and he can't see what they're doing. And then he realized that this man was just frozen at a hundred and something degrees below zero for a couple of years. And they throwing him out like a block of fucking ice. That's traumatic. And he only he wouldn't let nobody be around him if he wasn't there. He stood security over him. So yeah, he, he was stressed. That's some stressful shit. You know? Right. But we we all we all had different jobs. You just had to be strong enough to do your part. Tukey had the hardest part. Must have been the strongest one of us. Because I don't want to get froze. Fuck that shit. Don't freeze me. When my time to go, let me go. Don't freeze me. But he said he was going he was gonna make his C Nation see him walk again. So they got to see him walk the land. Mm-hmm. You know, three kings got to walk. We know who they is. Mm-hmm. Powerful message, bro, man. So uh, much appreciated. Uh, yeah. Before opening up the Q&A so quickly, uh, Morpheus, you know, Mystic is like this mentioned, you know, about uh, clean, cleaning, you know, your, your, art, your art, right? So that uh it's you know it's a gateway at the same time too so it's quite important all right so by doing this one might be able to do you know simple mystics uh works and carry you know with your own uh assigned missions you know what i mean so that's well said uh bro we're gonna open up the q a you know what i'm saying Mm-hmm. we'll go for an hour so i know there's 98 individuals so uh people you know what you're gonna do wherever where you can see the end icon click on it i'll try my, i'll do my best of tracking you know the the ranking or the order you know what i'm saying so simply uh you know when i'll shout your name or your appellation you know what i'm saying Just tell Dr. Rod who you are, where you're from, and kicking with your questions. So we're going to start right away. So yeah, I'm already seeing three individuals in lineup. So we're going to go first with <coughs> Envy, Envy Me, QPS. <coughs> you may go ahead. Hey, um, right now, I don't have a question. I didn't mean to raise my hand. I'm sorry. No doubt, no doubt, no worries, no worries. So, hold on, bro. So, we're going to go now with, yeah, Katarika Austin. Please go ahead. Hello. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Hi, I'm from Georgia. Okay, I got two things. The first one is when you touched on high blood pressure and heart problems. So... One day, um, I was napping, and I felt a pop in the middle of my forehead. Mm-hmm. And after that, like a year after that, I got pregnant again. And then after that, they told me that I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure and high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of confused on how that happened. Okay, so when you're pregnant, you ever heard of... Uh... Uh, what they call uh, pregnancy-induced hypertension? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's it's kind of like that. Well, when you're pregnant, you are already processing more stuff. You over All of your organs, your internal organs are taxed. 
because you not only you you actually constructing the baby in your womb at in real time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of these organs, the filters are filtering uh, high at a higher level, and so it builds up more uh, perspiration of the internal organ that causes what you call the uh, congestive heart failure. It's getting fluid build up in the chest cavity. It's really from a sweaty liver. When you, um, um, I'm gonna have a uh, Doc Pitt one day. I'm gonna have him come on here and talk to him about um, cleaning the filters of the body because that's who I use because he got the paperwork. And people don't want to hear right. you unless you got the paperwork in this society. So that's who I sent him to. And that also keeps me covered from telling people how to. They be coming over here knocking on my door, telling me I be telling them to kiss my ass. So yeah, <laughs> okay. And the second thing, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I see dead people in my dreams. Like mm -hmm. once those are messages that's coming from the other side. Okay. When you see dead people in your dreams, they they just messengers. Like a lot of people be like, oh, they coming to get, no, they ain't coming to get you. They coming to tell you something that you couldn't per perceive while you was awake. They was telling you while you was awake, probably with a dog bark or owl screech or a bird flying past, but we don't remember that stuff. So then they have to come tell us in the dream, they got to get a little more personal because of our ranking in the spirit realm. They have to get the message to us. Okay, so it's not a bad thing? No. Okay. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Kadarika, Austin, thank you for your your two questions. So next, we're gonna go with uh, Rafael Johnson. Yo, peace, Rod. What's going on, peace, God? What's going on with you? I tell you, I hit you on Instagram, man, and I was like, uh, you know, I was just trying to see like what was because I'm, I'm I'm in Chicago, so and I know when about to blow over. And I know, you know, it's some things coming. So I was just trying to see, like, what would be a, a good place for me and my family to go. You know what I'm saying? For the, to relocate, at least for this season. Look, that's that's instinctual because nature tells you where to go. But if you're right. in Chicago right now, you might you might be about to be in one of the safest cities in the, in the land. Okay. When, the, okay. when the three kings walk the land, every soldier going to be on deck to secure the whole city. No shenanigans. Right, 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 right. Okay. And my, my next question, okay, as far as the, are you like on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or anything like that? Or you still you still mess with the meat from time to time, fish or anything? I, I eat chicken and fish, uh, but that's a personal preference. Everybody not supposed to be vegan like everybody not supposed to be cannibal. Right. Okay. You know, so some people supposed to eat meat, some people not. Some people supposed to eat fish, some people not. We are right. different, but we are unique. Right. Okay. Because I do, I do feel better. I feel more fulfilled when I eat fish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Than when I'm vegan. And um, what else I wanted to say? And and old old girl, just, well, you just really explained it because my one of my guys came to me in my dream the other night, and he'd been dead a year. And you know what I'm saying? I looked at him and, and we smiled at each other. And I'm like, damn, you 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 dead? He like, yeah, I'm dead. I'm like, so you're not alive? He like, no, nah, I ain't alive. And that was it. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, death ain't what they told us it was. You about to, all this shit, about to, the whole veil about to be ripped open. Right, right, okay. We, we go, right. We're going back to what we call the forever time. Right. Hey, man, look, I just, I just want to say, man, thank you, man. I really appreciate your brain. I really appreciate your heart, bro. I resonate wholeheartedly. Peace to you. For sure, peace, God. Yeah. So we got next, Steve. Yeah. So thank you, bro, Raphael. So yes, next, Steve Mills. Um, how y'all doing? Peace to the queens and the kings. Yes, sir. Um, 2017, I coded seven times in 24 hours, and it was pronounced brain dead. And uh. And I laid in a coma for two weeks, but I woke up out of um. They pronounced me brain dead. Told my mother they crushed my chest cavity and everything, and they 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 they, 
they diagnosed me with Crohn's disease. That's what, uh, and I had pneumonia in my lungs. But I've been dealing with this Crohn's disease since 2017. And I was wondering how can I detoxify my body and get and, and to get it back regular because I never been the same. And it, it's like every time I go to the hospital, they give me something and, and my condition is getting worse. Yeah, that's what they designed to do. Do you have Facebook? Yes, I'm on, I'm one of your Facebook friends. Okay, on Facebook, I got a Facebook friend named Doc Pitt, right? He's a, a, a herbalist and a holistic healer. That's who I send people to with questions like yours because he's the professional in that area. Dr. Pitt? That, Doc Pitt, D-O-C, um, P-I-T-T, two words. Dr. Pitt, okay. Doc Pitt, yeah. Okay. That's all I had because I because I've been struggling with this and, and I feel like I'm being attacked spiritually. You is because when you say you coded seven times, that told me right then that you had uh, a, a he heavy spiritual conflict that was taking place over your physical form at that time. You can't see it with the naked eye, but you can experience it with the whole body. But when I was in when I was in that coma and I, and I actually put astral projected to an astral world and and I actually remember meeting these beings and they all they all told me that I was, I was going to be all right and I wasn't supposed to be here at this time. They said you ain't supposed to be here. Yeah, that's because normally when they tell you that you ain't supposed to be there, that means somebody interfered with your natural life process and sent you there too soon because we got a time we supposed to go. Right? Until we lift the veil, everybody is given a specific time. And a lot of people has been, this is another thing that caused the uproar in the outer atmosphere and other universes because people was being sent through the reincarnation cycles too soon. So when they go read the Akashic Records, they not due for another 50 years. They 50 years early. What happened? Then they coming down here to find out that in the physical world, beings that know how to inter interrupt the spiritual flow is deliberately causing the problem. Sending people through the loop too soon. Now it's congested. And so now they're just throwing people in the bodies, people going in upside down, backwards, because there's too many souls rushing back in and it's not enough women to birth them all. Hmm. Yeah, so they, they sent you back because you on a, a master's level. Hmm. So you, you got to get your system clean. So make sure you get up with Doc Pitt. Tell him I sent you. He's going to help you get right. Okay. <clears throat> Sure. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Steve. Thank you, Steve Mills. So uh, next, um, <coughs> J. J uh, now we'll go with uh, J. Belong eighty six oh one. No, yes, so, here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, J. I didn't see yeah. J. Belong eight eight six oh one. Uh, please go ahead. She don't know she muted. Can you hear now? There you go, sweetie. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much. So this has been um, very good. Um, and it's almost like people have always come into my experience and things have shown themselves to me. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, I'm originally from a small country in South America. So I'm just wondering, how do I tie into all of this or will it somehow be shown to me? This, what country are you from? Suriname, S-U-R-I-N-A-M-E. Okay, Suriname. So, um... Yeah, that's what these Central American islands. So your blood is still indigenous to those islands and to these lands. All you did 
was moved to another part of home. You went from the living room, no, you went from the shed into the main house. That's it. It's the same. The people was the same. We didn't, we had our shades over here before these invaders came. From the darkest of dark to the lightest of light, we had every shade and every hair texture. And that's why they use what we call Dawes Roll in order to deceive us. Because the Dawes Rolls was the ones they brought over to replace us with artificial contract law. But they had to use one of us for the blood ritual. So they killed Crispus Atticus and wrote the constitution with his blood so it'd have to be honored to the close of the age. And the only way that they could claim right is if y'all surrender, if we all gotta surrender. If one of us to stand up and say, hell no, we ain't surrendering and, and get the rest of us to pay attention, then we all get what we got coming. They, they done, it's a rap for them all over the planet, wherever we at, they done. Okay. One other thing is, it isn't until later in life that I kind of learned that everybody is not the same as me. For the mm -hmm. longest time, I thought everybody was the same as me. And I'm, and I'm learning more and more that that's not the case. I just have a warrior spirit. And I come from, well, I can say I come from a line. In South America, where I'm from, there's different tribes. Yeah. And so we held on to certain customs, but we're like, our spirit is like, we have a fighting spirit. And I feel like a warrior, but the same thing is, I don't, I'm still like, I'm feeling around in the dark. It's like, everything isn't clear to me. And I'm just trying to figure out when will it kick? When will when will I feel more? When will my inner knowing be, okay, be so true? There, be there's, there's something else um, um, cleansing spiritual wise. It's a spiritual bath. Um, you use a, a oil. For yours, you would use something that's to enhance your uh, psychic abilities and then you would put Epsom salt in the water and you gotta make it hot as you can stand it and then when you get in there you put the alcohol in there the alcohol is to wash your auric field and your auric field is your receiver for psychic impressions if it's cluttered with bad intentions from people you didn't been around and they bad energy then you're not going to be able to perceive it because it's going to be blocked so that's how you unblock. What kind of alcohol? Um, the highest percentage of rubbing alcohol you can find. Okay. I can talk to you forever because my mind is just soaking up everything. It's just, it's just wonderful. I just, I just love it. It's like I'm learning. You know, this is great. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. Thank you, dear. So next, uh, Brother Rod, we're going to go with a question in the chat. So it's from Adem Ali. All right. So what info do you have on Canada? I ask, as it seems a little, a little different in galvanizing folks. So just to let you know, Brother Rod, you know, I'm near this place, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. So from um canada has already been taken over by the indigenous people the commander-in-chief um is also the queen of canada now and she's been instrumental in deposing the, the fake queen of england and exposing a lot of these uh pedophile rings and a lot of these beings that don't belong here so she just if you can um look her up i can't remember her name but She's indigenous to the land up there. And the trigger for them was the um, mass slaughter of indigenous children at a Catholic church. That's what set the whole thing in motion in Canada. Right on. And uh, uh, yep. Morpheus. Queen Ramon. Yeah. And if I can add it to it, Morpheus, um, mm -hmm. what you're saying is totally true. And just to let you know now, 
the level of let's say let's say, let's call it stupidity you know what i'm saying against your birth rights and everything is only an image of their you know whatever you want to call them you're right the, those corporations uh cabal whatever. <laughs> it's only reflecting their uh current uh how they're standing so you know uh the fire is on their ass so that's why things are so ridiculous on the oh yeah this is this over with we just waiting on um we was waiting on Tuki to get strong he walking now so we about to see him mm -hmm. so all right uh, we got next got his talk uh sure or i see him monday for short So we could go with uh, Monday. Okay. Okay. Hey, you guys. Hey, Kings. How are you guys? Everyone, hello in the chat. <laughs> How you doing? I'm well. So um, I had two questions, but I'm kind of make it quick. So um, my first question is, um, I do believe that I'm indigenous to this land, um, but... I want to know, you know, how do we know for sure? And then also, like, um, how do we unlock our, you know, our psychic abilities or our gifts, our abilities or whatever our gift is currently here on this realm? So what what I did is I did a couple of things for mine is I got a, a, a book called How to Unlock Your Telecult Powers. Okay. In, in that book, it had a lot of a lot of good information. I learned tarot because tarot, uh, the brother that taught me tarot said it was training training wheels for your psychic ability. And then I got a book right. called <clears throat> CRV Control Remote Viewing, and it's a step by step guide on how to do remote viewing. Now, remote viewing is what you call clairvoyance, and it's teachable. Okay. And you probably okay. gonna pick it up ten times faster than I would, and I picked it up pretty quick. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> okay. And then um, my last question: um, in the past, like I used to really um, have dreams, but my dreams used to be so vivid that when I would wake up the next day, I would kind of be able to interpret them I, interpret them i would tell like a friend that they're about to be pregnant and i would know the precise person that is going to be pregnant or i would just like see certain things and when i was younger certain dreams used to scare me so i don't dream anymore i feel like my dreams are almost non-existent other than uh most recently maybe two years ago when my younger brother died and he came is that something that i can turn back on or turn off you could turn it back on. You can actually take control of your dream. This is enough. Like, grab your index finger and pull it and look around you and take notice the fact that you're not in the dream. You're going to do that every day, a couple times a day till you forget. You're going to forget to do it. That means that now you got to wait for the, the turnaround is you're going to do it in the dream next. When you do it in the dream, you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, uh, Oh, I'm in the dream. And if you don't get scared, you can control where you go in the dream. You can say, take me to my grandmama, Joanne, from 1822, and they'll take you there. And this is controlling the dream state. It also controls psychic connections to your family tree and your bloodline. And this is how a lot of us was being initiated in the dream realms by our elders because they was able to talk to us from the dream plane and initiate us when they couldn't do it in the physical realm because of the murders. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Gratitude. <laughs> All right, so we'll be long. All right, so <laughs> thank you. So Listen, uh, just for the people, uh, we're going to try to, you know, ask one question for each, right? Since, uh, you know, time is advancing. So, uh, next, Ayana Adaku. You got hey. Goddess Talk online right now. Hello? Hello, yep. can you hear me? I can hear you. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Ron Hayes, it's what an honor to sit and talk with you today. You're always blessing us with some amazing information. Uh, from the first time I heard you, I don't know, it just resonated. And there were other people who I was listening to. I was like, eh, nah. But when you, everything you said was like, boom, 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 boom. You were just hitting, hitting everything on point. And, um, I, I just want to say thank you for that. Um, but I follow you on Facebook too. I do a little astrology. So I think I tagged you in an astrology post I did this morning. But I had a question for you in regards to numbers. What does it mean when you keep seeing your birthday? Oh, sorry, bro. You're, uh, yeah, you're on mute. Okay, I'm back on. Yes. Okay, so when you see your birthday repeated um, before you, it's preparing you for a, a, a reset or a recycle. Your birth date is a signal of a rebirth. But the rebirth can be a small thing or a big thing according to your level. Mm. Okay. Does it matter what the numbers are? Like, if I told you the numbers, would it mean anything or it's just personal for me? So the numbers, when I do like, a, uh, like if I was to do a personal read, then I would use the numbers to use me as a mirror to find what they meant for me in order to know what they mean for you. Okay. And that's a drawn out process. So we probably don't have time for that here. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, quick questions, uh, Morpheus. Would mm -hmm. you would you please repeat like the two books that you mentioned? One is called Teleco uh, Unlocking Your Teleco Powers. I don't remember the author name. And the other one was uh, CRV. It's a controlled remote viewing. I know you can get both of them on Amazon because that's where I got them. <laughs> There you so that's the uh the two books so next we have maurice theodore yeah i'm just asking um, if you had anything on, on file as far as nationality goes slave is part yeah. of the slave contract system it's a it's a deception a grand deception at that okay uh. It's recontracted an expired contract with a no press that's already been overthrown. Wow. Okay, that's 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 different. That's definitely the first time I heard that. I know, because that's because okay. the ones that's pushing nationality is slave catchers. <laughs> I got you. All right. So with that being said, um So is it even necessary then to put something on the record to say that well this is who I am so y'all can quit fucking look, with me? Yeah, they look they go when you see the three kings on the land, all that shit is a rap. Maybe that's why it's been taking so long for me. Maybe yep. that's what it is. It's exactly been taking so long because you ain't supposed to be dealing with that. I can look at you and tell you from the land, so we, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and the second thing I wanted to add, well, second thing I just wanted to say, uh, mm -hmm. like what the, the emperor said before previously, bro, as soon as I seen the video, I already knew and, and the, the information that you was giving and what you were sharing, I swear, it, it was it was, it was was as easy as hearing ABC123. I know Elijah it may Mahan, sound far. Elijah to me, told me, make it plain enough for a baby to understand it, so I try to simplify it as much as possible. Listen, and I love the numbers too. So when you was talking about the cold flip, bro, I spent like a night and probably like a day just all with paper and pen. Like, okay, let me let me see how you do that. I, oh, okay. That's good right. stuff, man. Appreciate it. So, so all the time, bro. All right now. How are you? All right. So thank you, brother Maurice. Uh, uh to the people. So uh just to let you know, right? Uh, I'd rather be sincere. We might not be able to uh, you know get the chance of 
having everyone to ask a question to you, Brother Ross, but we'll do our best. So next we have Cameron Barton. Hello, can y'all hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. All right. First off, I'm going to say peace to everybody. You went mute. Oh, there you go. You're back. Mute again. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I want to say peace to everybody in here. But um, I want to ask you about a salvia trip that I had last year when I was So um, is, that was the same right there. See how it froze him with his finger on his eye. It wasn't yeah, just uh, haphazardly. That was it was. So he had his finger on his on his left eye like this, and it froze. This is his mother's eye. So what he's asking for right now is whatever it's gonna be. Is his real question is is my mama say give me wisdom? This is what he's asking. Right. So um. When I, uh, at the peak of it, I seen a, uh, a white, like kind of like a sidewalk curving. It was um, completely white. And then everything around it was um, black and there were stars. Mm -hmm. And there was a person in front of me completely made out of a light body. And also I seen my hand uh, the best way I can explain it was like, it was like me taking off a VR and then the person in front of me told me, um, you finally made it. Are you finally back along those lines? And then um, I think a couple months later, I seen it in a dream or it might have been a vision during the daytime. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. So... There is an um, initiation rite. It's, it's called walking the cosmos. <clears throat> and you actually walk on what appears to be um, a sidewalk made out of white light. The light being that was in front of you was called your higher self or your holy guardian angel. Okay. Right. So in this lifetime, your, your job is to overcome the seven deadly sins so that you can make your holy guardian angel become one with you. And this is we call it becoming Christ conscious. Okay. Right. So at this point in your meditations, you know, um, go back over the video earlier when I gave an exercise to waking up in the dream. Mm -hmm. Right. So then when you wake up that level of consciousness, and aware in the dream, then you can actually go, with the with your higher self on the journey your now your spirit body is taking your mind body your mental body on the journey of okay. enlightenment and awareness all right thank you yeah appreciate that all right so next we have uh lg style of six You. There you hello. Go. hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys so much. I'm at work. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm so gratitude to you guys. I'm in Chicago. And um, one Saturday, I was eating uh, crab legs in my house. So I was by my window, which has a beautiful tree. Oh, by the way, Ron, me and my sister love you. We, uh, <laughs> your wisdom is amazing. So anyway, my sister Helen. Um, Man, so I, I was mean in the house. <laughs> eating crab legs and uh, my husband's on the couch. So I get up and go to the bathroom and I come back and my tree is at the window and I'm like, hi tree, you know, speaking to the tree. It was pitch black. When I look over to my right, I saw Panther, a black Panther. And I love the black Panther movie, but because I like the way they bring about the message, how the ancestors are in the tree, you know, when he goes into and meet his, uh, talk to his dad and, um, mm -hmm. I didn't want to see a panther though. I threw my food away. I couldn't eat. I ran upstairs. I went to bed because I, I was, I'm scary. So I just wanted to know what was that? My sister said it was the, my ancestors, but I'm like, they could have came to me in the dream. But yeah. Listen, that's, 
<laughs> Dust the house of mast. <laughs> so all, all of the Panthers, when you see, like, for instance, the Black Panther Party, is actually the tribe of Bast. Okay. And Bast is oh. uh, is a is the secret sacred priesthood. And mm-hmm. the reason you sing the Panther because you are a part of the secret sacred priesthood. And okay. um, yeah, so the Panther was actually a very good sign for you to see because they don't come. That's a totem animal. When they don't come to anybody, you have to be uh, accepted in that totem clan by Woo. the spirit body. Okay, I'm honored. <laughs> I accept it because I saw his eyes. He was looking at me or she. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I ran away because I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. So go um, back to the Panther yeah. movie. Looked at the very first beginning when you see Angela Bassett face to face with that giant Panther. Yes. Okay. Her name oh, is Angela oh. Bassett. Bassett is Bassett, yeah, which is Bast. She was the an angel okay. of Bast. So that was giving you, that's showing you it's the same message that they're giving you there. Okay. You just had okay. It in real life and it was played out there on the movie screen. <laughs> okay, well, gratitude, Ron. I'll keep in touch. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So, hey, Brother Rod, uh, let me know. So, how many, how long or how many minutes would you be able to stay for the question? Uh, we take a couple more questions. I'll let you know when I get tired. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So, next, DLB. Hello, Taino. Hello, Brother Rod. How are you? How you doing, beloved? I'm fine. This is Inertia. So um, I just wanted to explain somewhat of a vision that I had, and I would like your insight on it. Mm -hmm. So I remember, oh, my God, my my heart is all of a sudden it it starts beating fast. (laughs) I was so, sorry, sis. Sorry, I did not yeah. recognize your voice. So, uh, oh yeah, it's me. <laughs> All right. So, um, I was laying in bed, and um, while I was closed my eyes like this, and while I closed my eyes, I was. It was like a scene coming through, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to squint my eyes to really capture what's going on in this scene. And all I can remember is I saw like from the knees down, but everybody was wearing white. I know there was men and women and it looked like they were at this big party. I saw like, you know, ripped up white jeans, Air Force Ones and, you know, women with skirts and stuff like that. And I'm talking to myself, I'm like, okay, what do you want me to see? What are you trying to tell me? And I'm like squinting real hard, real hard trying to get it. But I yeah. couldn't get anything. Okay, because let me tell you a couple of things right, right there. So yeah. the reason why you couldn't get it is because you was trying hard. You have to relax and let it come. Okay, understood. And I know exactly what you was looking at. You was looking at the, um, the meeting of the matriarchs in Chicago. Oh, wow. And they're going to all be wearing white. The NGT going to be in all white. Wow. That's 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 wonderful. <laughs> and I want to um, I also had like a vision. Can you hear me? Yeah, you blacked out for a minute, but I can hear you now. OK, um, ever since I first heard you. I mean, I I was hooked. And um, I remember also having a vision. I wasn't asleep, but I saw myself, you know, having to put light candles, white candles on the four corners of where my parents live in Jersey, in their backyard. (laughs) So I know, you know, the north, south, east, and west, the four elements and, you know, with all the chaos that's pending, 
or, you know, with all the tsunami talk and, you know, things that are about to go south and everything. Your vision was telling you it was a protection ritual. It was called the, uh, the it's a ritual of the four corners. It's a, the symbolic shrine. The shrine is the four X's, it's the mother line. The mm. father is the three pillars, it's the father line. When you see the four, that's dealing with the vice lord line. The vice lord is the mother line of us all. That's the, that's what you call the grandmother tribe. Mm. And the grandmother mm. tribe is ran by the old dark skinned mean ass lady in the hood. That's her <laughs> shit. The one that always got money, don't nobody know where she get it from. It's her <laughs> shit. <laughs> and you know what? I have an aunt of mine who lives in Haiti. And she used to be a practitioner, like a like what they call a mumble. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, Auntie, I had my I had a dream, you know, me lighting candles. She was like, Oh no, that's that's satanic. I'm like, hold on, what? Because she's yeah, so she's on the Christian, Christian now. thing now. Yeah. So oh, what the Christian, God. the Christian teaches you to to see it all, but don't practice it. Mm -hmm. Give it to us. Let us do it for you. Mm. We're going to burn the candles on your behalf and we're going to get the blessings on your behalf. You just keep giving us the power and we're going to keep using it. And that's why all the preachers drive them big pretty cars and all the practitioners of the church is walking to church. Right. Right. They got So we got all the voodoo, but ain't got none of the power for the people. All the power is concentrated at the pulpit. My goodness. That... That's a fact. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to, you know, search and tap in, you know, to my lineage for a long time, but I'm always met with, like my dad would tell me, don't go down that road. You might find something you don't want to see. Don't, yeah, if you but, go dig in, you dig too far and then, and it's so kind this of like is, a fear tactic. This, this is what we was taught. Okay, so that's the same as up here. So they're telling you too smart for your own good. Mm -hmm. That means that if you try to exercise any of your real power, intelligence, slave master gonna kill your ass. That's what it means. Right, right. Got it. Well, bring it on if you want to play. Make my motherfucking day. <laughs> you be one hurt motherfucker black. <laughs> Put your ass on your back. <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you for your insight, brother Rod. I, I appreciate you. Much love. It's a pleasure speaking with you face to face. I don't want to take up too much time, but um, there was a gentleman that spoke about him being in a coma and it, it brought back some memories for me. But um, I'll, I guess I'll hit you up on a private message so we can further discuss if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So just to let you know, Rod, uh, Tia B actually contacted me last week. You know what I'm saying? And uh, spoke, speaking of which, we talk about those things and uh, she knew you were, you know, going to be there today. So shout out to this. And Rod, if you don't mind, I'm just going to say a shout out to the indigenous people of the land who speak Creole. So, ça qui passe, ou elle que je dis à nous nous gagnons chaud là alors pour toutes nous qui a pas les créoles là alors on comprend mettez nous en forme Kembela et puis pas 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 oublier bataille là on comprend faut nous Kembela so that's for the indigenous people of the land speaking creole so next we have Carmisha Wilkins hi peace and blessings family hello to you Rod hey, um, my heart been beating ever since <laughs> <laughs> I've been coming up. I've been coming up because um, a lot of people have been sharing their visions. And one thing you said about just like you can control your dream state. And when I say that, I've been able to do that, which is crazy. And um, since I've been, because I transitioned to um, vegan and since I have been eating clean, my visions has been exactly about what you have been talking about recently. But um I've been having so many, I don't even want to go into those. Um, but one thing I really want to add, um, I see colors a lot. And when I close my eyes, I see just shadows and I see people. 
like either in a circle. I just see them like moving. And I, and I'm thinking, is these my ancestors? Am I talking to my ancestors? I don't know because, and I, and I feel like my intuition, it, it doesn't lead me wrong. And just lately I've been having to really listen to it and just been affirming, not being um, deceived at all. Um, because I had just had experience a lot, like just recently having um, visions of me ascending and then um, my mom, worrying about my mom because my mom took the vaccine, worrying about my family. I'm a family person and I was ascending and it was like, I was, I was like, mom, I was trying to explain to my mom why, why this is happening. And it was like, I was let go in a dream. I was let go. And I'm like, and I turned back. No, I don't want to stay here. Like, no, like, no, <laughs> like I don't choose this life. Like, no. And then when I turned around, my mom and my aunt were just smiling. Like, I was like, oh, hell no. Like what's, what's going on? What was this about? But I always, when I close my eyes, I see it ain't dead people or nothing. I just see shadow and I see people. And it's, um, since I was a little girl, I've been having crazy visions. And now, and by what you've been saying lately, I've literally just trying to connect it. Like, wow, that's it. That's it. Like, yeah. So I just- really So when you, when you see them standing in the circle, you actually are watching the ancient family ritual protection on the family land. That's why you see it. You the family priestess. Mm. And so when you seen your mom and your auntie smiling, that's what they were smiling for because the only way that you can be left behind is your work ain't done. Ooh. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. I don't even know what to think right now what you just said that because that's what I've been trying to figure out. I'm sorry. I don't want to. Um... You okay, sweetie? We... This, this, this oh. the awakening. You gonna, you gonna go through all that and some more stuff too. Yes, and I, I was questioning a lot because the majority of my family, I love my family, has gotten that dang on vaccine, and I promise I was like I was here to save y'all. And I give you a spoiler that. alert: everybody didn't get the vaccine. Some people got saline. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the ones that you see acting normal. Oh. They got saline. Oh. They ain't supposed to give certain people the shot and they know who they ain't supposed to give it to. Oh. Whew. Yeah. And oh, it's it's just, I, I don't know. I was just like, it's it's a lot. I'm going, I'm I'm not going through a lot, but I really am just spiritually. I really am. I see a lot and I'm just like, what is this? But um, thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Oh. That's really all I had. I just have so I have so much to say. But when I say since I heard, I was like, I don't know. I was like, man, he got to be a part of my family because he's funny. Yeah, see, he the exact same stuff as me. My family. It is I'm like, I don't know what it is to connect with him. But like, let's just talk about. I'm listening to the lyrics. I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. So. um yeah, that's all I got, y'all. I don't know who had to talk next, or I'm sorry for interrupting whoever had to say something to me. <laughs> no, no, no worries, Gar Garmisha. So uh, thanks to you. You know what I'm saying? Ew, don't be quiet. Don't me. All right. So next, uh, we have Cecilia Simons L. So welcome, sister. Hi, how y'all doing? Hey, beloved, how you doing? Peace. I'm wonderful, Rod. Thank you, Taino, for this platform yet again. I love coming to check your guests. I saw Rod. I think I messaged you and let you know, Rod. I saw you on your, um, the first time I noticed you and was like blown away when uh, Taino had you on a few months back. Um, and, and he called you Rod Hayes, the shaman. So I've been blown away ever since because like everybody else has been saying, everything you say not only resonates, but it connects dots across different subjects, categories, uh, pantheons, religion, spirituality. You just seem to connect, like even like civically with the history and all that type of thing. I mean, you just connect it all. So um, when I first heard you, I was blown away. And I just <laughs> wanna say much gratitude and uh, like, sorry for my dog in the back. I just wanna say thank you so much for the work that you've been doing because I know that we have, a lot of us have been looking like who is gonna be the person or one of the main people that step forth in these times to kind of polarize and galvanize everybody, you know? Cause it seems like our people 
we try, we have people that try to step up, but then they, you know, get taken out or, you know, competition or they get compromised in some way. But mm -hmm. I don't see that. I never even felt that from you from when I first got to watch that video with you on this show previously. So thank you, first of all. You're welcome. Um, now with me, uh, I'm a herbalist. I help women heal their wounds naturally. I help them shrink fibroids naturally because of my own personal experiences. Um, I think that was my, my kind of initiation into me connecting with my womb lineage uh, mm -hmm. because I was told I had to have surgery um, and I defied the odds and, and got rid of them naturally. And now I teach women how to do that. But I also know there's a deeper spiritual, you know, indigenous bringing me back into drawing closer to nature happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I just had a couple questions. Um, two things have been happening a lot recently. When I'm saying something, I could be in conversation, I could be typing on my computer. If the news or something on television is playing or the radio, this, the last two words in the sentence I just said are, are, I'm hearing them audibly from whatever's playing in the background. Am I like seeing the breakdown of the matrix? Like, what is that all about? Cause it have, it's been happening for like a few years now. Okay, um, now, a couple yeah. of things. Give me a clue. One, you say that you've been dealing with healing the wounds. Yes. Okay, so it was critical that all of what we call them sa, S-A, priestesses. Okay. Okay, when you hear the name Medusa, uh -huh. that means rank 10 of the sa priestess. That's the highest rank. Okay. They said they severed her head, Medusa's head. That means they shattered, scattered the priestesses. Mm. The that was, so it was doula priestesses, mm -hmm. right? The doula studies is what your calling is. Mm. And all of your um, um, connection, the more wounds you, every time you heal one, you heal a thousand. Mm. But you start with yourself first. That's how you, that's how you get your first client. Because right. in the book it say physician heal thyself. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they tell you in modern medicine that no doctor, that any doctor that practice on itself is what a damn fool, right? But that don't make sense because mm -hmm. who gonna heal you better than you? Mm -hmm. Right? Amazing. So now, if you understand your body and you understand how to heal you, you are training yourself to automatically know how to heal anybody else with the same or similar condition. Mm -hmm. Then from there, your knowledge got to expand by, by accumulation, other people, like minds coming in, giving you pieces of, to the puzzle. So at this time, this is the raising of the matriarchy, the ram. The ram is the symbol of the uterus. I'm an Aries. Okay. <laughs> and so the Aries is the symbol of Ra. Ra is the sun. But the mm. sun don't shine if it don't have a portal to peek through, mm. right? So the sun can't be born without a mother. Mm. So all that shit about Adam being born first is a goddamn lie. Because the Y chromosome is an atrophied X chromosome with parts missing. Mm -hmm. So that means that somebody had to alter X in order to make a penis. Mm. So that means that the woman was here first. Now, in science, we can verify this because you got over 60,000, 80,000 years ago, you got what they call the 12 sisters of Eve, right? Or daughters of Eve. Then you have, no, the 12 daughters of Isis. Mm -hmm. And then each one of them is a different shade from the darkest to the lightest because those are the 12 shades that come naturally on the DNA, mm -hmm. right? So before that, 3.5 million years in the Olduvar Gorge in Kenya, you have Lucy's bones. They don't got no man with her. And they got a whole bunch of bones. It wasn't just hers. But they didn't find no males. They all had four X chromosomes. That means they was all female. Now, when you trace primordial Adam back, you go back 26,000 years to the sub-Saharan region in Africa. So now who was here first? Lucy or Adam? Hmm. <laughs> she date back 3.5 million, he date back 26,000. Who was here first? 
So that yeah. becomes self-explanatory. Okay. Right. So the whole goal was to demonize the divine feminine, make the masculine the superior gender. Because they're actually not. But you had to have a woman to turn on the women first mm -hmm. in order to even allow the men to take over. Yeah. So it was, it was an inside job. Go back to what we started at. Get rid of the enemy within. You don't have to worry about the external enemy. You healing the wounds is one of the highest callings in this physical realm because you can't get here if you don't come through that portal. Wow. So you become the Stargate keeper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your yeah. So your job is to make sure that all of the Stargates that's going to be birthing our next generation is functional. Yes, I see mm -hmm. that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> wow. Thank you so much. So you think <laughs> the synchronicities and stuff is just more of my connection opening up? Yeah, because the more you tune in to more wounds, you become like a Tesla coil in the center of Tesla coils. You become the, the tower that link them all together. So you're going to get the most psychic influence out of the scenario, out of everybody. But you're also going to know how to help everybody the best. Nature going to whip you into shape, whether you do it to the uh, traditional way or whether you do it the way she's going to make you do it. But you're going to learn it. Yeah, that's, the, that's why I know I had uterine fibroids, because I had to learn. I wasn't doing any of that. I always had an interest, but I learned because I healed myself. But, um, you know, I just, just thank you so much. <laughs> you're amazing. So, yeah. Much love. So, we're probably going to be seeing you at the Doula Center. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the Doula Center at? Let me know. Send me, send me some, uh, send me the address. It, it, ain't gonna be no, it ain't going to be no secret. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. It's my passion. <coughs> Thank That's you. Nice. You're welcome. Thanks to you, Cecilia.